Good morning, and this is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And what I'm listening to, and hopefully my camera picked it up, is what I call, and what is called, a utility station on the HF band. And what's not a utility station is your international broadcasts, your amateur radio communications, that's not utility. Everything else I categorize, in in general is categorized, as a utility station. Now that can include things as weather data, either voice or fax, um, military communications. For instance, there's a very active um, frequency of 1175 kilohertz which is used by the United States Air Force for communications long distance. They use HF for long distance communications. Also, communi excuse me, commercial airlines use the HF bands for communications. And that's what I categorize as utility. Also, there's a lot of digital data out there that you can decode, such as the weather facts information I showed you in a previous video that's out there on HF that you can, HF radio, that you can decode. Now, what brought this up for me this morning is I was looking at the latest version of, or latest issue of the Spectrum Monitor magazine, which I get via a PDF file directly off their web page. And one of the articles, monthly article, is a listing of shortwave listing shortwave utility communications that the author has received over the past month. And I'll just briefly show it to you because I don't want to violate any copyrights. But here is what it is. It's usually two pages, and it's a listing giving the frequency, the call sign, if he knows the call sign, the user and location, the time that he logged it, and some details about what the station is. I'll give you some examples. Um, at the frequency of 2.677, the call sign cross Corsant, which is the French Coast Guard. And when he was receiving it, it was on USB upper sideband, and he was receiving maritime weather in French. So you say to yourself, okay, I don't speak French. I really don't care about the weather in France, so why would I want to listen to it? It's just the concept of being able to pick it up. That's the thing. It's just, it's a hobby. God, don't get so uptight about it. Anyway, I move on. I'm just kind of picking a few of them. Here is, and I picked this up the other day, is on 8459 kilohertz. This is U.S. Coast Guard Station at Kodiak, Alaska, which sends out weather facts um, on a scheduled basis. And you can look at that schedule, which I showed you on the previous uh, show about weather facts. And again, it's just something to do. You know, it's kind of cool to be able to get, be able to hear on your shortwave radio, this have that go into your computer with a, and a piece of software on your computer, actually decode that noise and draw a picture, a weather map picture. Yeah. To me, it's exciting. Maybe I'm just weird, I guess. Okay. Um, another one listen here is the one I mentioned before, which is 11175 kilohertz which is the U.S. Air Force channel that provides long-distance communications to um, 
aircraft, U.S. aircraft. And sometimes that's real busy. Other times, like yesterday, no, today's Tuesday. Sunday, I had my radio tuned to that, and I had uh, my computer set up to record any activity when there's activity. So it had a squelch control. And I left it on all day, and I got maybe one transmission. That was it. So time, sometimes, and maybe because it was Sunday, maybe the Air Force doesn't work on Sunday. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, here's one at 17.925 kilohertz, which is um, the particular one that I recorded was American Airlines commuting, commercial airlines commuting back to the some base tower. In this case, it was in New York. So that's what I just want to tell you about. There's other things to listen to on shortwave besides just international broadcast and amateur radio communications. And I find this kind of interesting. Um, it, and you don't realize how much there's out there until you get a listing like this and you see how much activity. This is one person for one month what he has logged on his radio as far as utility communications, be it fax, voice, weather, whatever. So anyway, I just thought I'd show it to you, see what you thought. You want to get into uh, utility uh, radio listing or you're already into utility radio listing, this is a nice uh, monthly log. Again, this is from the Spectrum, the Spectrum Monitor. <clears throat> Excuse me, I didn't make it through the whole show without getting clogged up. The Spectrum Monitor Magazine, of which you can get a subscription for a year, or you can buy an individual issue. I think the individual issue is like three dollars. And let me see. In closing, if I can. Uh, Get my camera over there to show you the web page. I don't know. The trouble is when I go to the web page, I can't see where the camera is pointing. So let me go back. Okay, now I got it pointing at my monitor. Now I'll flip to that page. And you should be seeing on my monitor right now, which I can't see, um, their web page, which is lowercase the spectrum monitor.com and here is you can either subscribe for a year or you can like this is the issue I was talking about December 2015 and you can get that for three dollars and once you pay for it you get it immediately what they do is they send you a link to <clears throat> excuse me to a web page where you can download the PDF file immediately. So you get it instantly. You don't have to wait for it to show up through the mail four to six weeks later. It's instantaneous. So I, I'm, I'm no way connected to them. I'm just saying this is a good source of information. Not only what I showed you, but many, many other things about monitoring HF, UHF, they have a very good um, article, monthly article, on low frequency, too. And it also gives listings of frequencies and what's on those frequencies on the low frequency band. Anyway, if you enjoyed this show, you know what to do. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, which button do I push? I'm confused here. Okay, stop.